Hello and welcome to the best of Coach Rick's Winners. On Coach Rick's Winners, we focus on the best in the areas of sports. And I'm very fortunate today, and you'll see why, to have the guests that we have. Our guest today is Ms. Tracy Knight, and she's the CEO of Skinny South Incredible Treats Incorporated. Let me make sure that I say that again so that you will be perfectly clear that I said what you think I said. She's the CEO of, yes, Skinny South Incredible Treats Incorporated. Ms. Knight, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having right. me. We are really excited, and I know that you've got a lot of information that is going to inform and change some lives. I so, hope so, yes. <laughs> thank you very much for agreeing to be our guest today. And we always like to start off at a natural point. So since uh, our audience really is probably raring to get to know who you are, tell us some things about you. Of course. I am a single parent. I am the CEO of Skinny South Incredible Treats. And I enjoy running. I am a runner <laughs> and I enjoy teaching others about nutrition and my education comes from an array of things obviously college from the university of houston as well as lambeth university and then certifications from cooper institute in dallas texas awesome so you are a runner now my question is are you a distance runner or are you a speedster i am a little bit of both you All have right. to have a little bit of both when you are doing the distance and you see the goal and then you want to sprint to it <laughs> wow mm. okay so what um did you run as a child? When did you start running? I did. I started running at five years old. My first race, I'll never forget Jenna Harris. Wow. <laughs> she was in front of me the entire time, and I didn't realize it was a race until the very end, and people were telling me to run faster, ah. and she was right in front of me. And, and I came in second that day, and since then I've uh, made it my vendetta to come in first wow. but we're jenna and i still talk to this day it's pretty funny but uh from that i uh, i i did other sports i did basketball and i really enjoy basketball from that point forward because in my town we didn't have running per se yeah. we had basketball oh, okay mm -hmm. and in your town what town is that well i grew up in i'm from memphis mm -hmm. but i was raised in north georgia in Cherokee County and I went to Woodstock Elementary wow. very country place <laughs> so we 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 uh, had basketball and that was pretty much it some people played soccer in the yard but it was a lot of mountains yeah. and that's pretty much all there was to do so Woodstock yeah. County that sounds like it's close to Kennesaw is it it is matter of fact well guess yes. what I used to live in that area oh. too oh my goodness I surely did <laughs> all right so now that we uh, realize that neighbors we, <laughs> yes, indeed. So you started running at five. That reminds me of one of my first 5Ks, and maybe that explains it. There was this kid who kept running past me, and then he would slow down, and then he would run past me again. So he was having fun, and I was dying. Yes, that's true. He was having fun with you. <laughs> wow, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk some about Skinny South. Incredible treats. How'd you come up with the name Skinny South? You know, that's kind of really an oxymoron. It right. is, yeah. but I you know a lot of people call me Skinny. Yeah. <laughs> and then I am from the South. And what I do is I've taken the Southern desserts and made them into protein cookies. So carrot cake, walnut crunch cake, then your traditional chocolate chip, as well as banana nut bread. So okay. that's how Skinny South Incredible Treats was born. Wow. Okay, so now we've got the incredible treats. You are a runner. You've been a runner all of your life. Mm. So how do you how do you tie these things in? Because there's really much more to what you do than just running. And now, do you actually make the treats yourself? I do. I make the treats. I market the treats. I anything you can think of in a business, I'm it. Awesome. For sure. <laughs> okay, so let's let's tie all of this together. Um, you've got the treats and you got the running. What else do you do? Well, I do nutritional services, and how this came about is that I was teaching the Skinny South Incredible Treats came about by me teaching people uh, how to pair foods together properly. What is cinnamon and what does it do with sugar? What is protein? How much should you have? Women are different than men, etc. So with this, I 
and this treats, I wanted people to understand that you can have your treat, <laughs> have some fun, but have that taste. Don't neglect yourself. Yeah. Uh, but it's really important that people understand, yes, I hear moderation, but again, it's a treat and it's delicious, it's guiltless. Okay. And we have to be very careful about nutrition and where it goes in our life, portion control and things of that nature. So even the treats are a smaller portion that you would than you would typically get. There's three cookies in the pack. It's a zip top pack so that people can take it with them wherever they go and just slowly eat on it all day long to sustain their sugars, mm -hmm. which is very important that they do that. So what was the driving force behind you actually doing this? Looking at you now, you're slender. You said that you've been running all of your life. Uh, you know, some people, what do they say? Um, invention or necessity is in, in the invention, uh, the mother of invention. So did it come from you having a weight problem or you're just really uh, excited about health? Was it part of your... Um, your formal training or what? How did you come about that? A little bit of everything. Okay. Actually, my daughter in her kindergarten class, mm -hmm. and I started making the cookies for the kindergarten class, but at the same time, I was doing research with ADHD and processed foods and sugars that the kids were having, and I noticed correlation. So while making these cookies for my daughter, I'm thinking, now why am I putting the sugars and the butters and this things in there that are actually having problems with kids. It's not pairing correctly. Right. So I started pulling out the, the bad per se, uh, such as the butters and the processed sugars and putting in other things like applesauce or yogurts or things of that nature. Now today's cookie is not like the first cookie, yeah. but she, we took these to the class and we were having it at lunch and the parents started calling me, what are you giving my child? <laughs> And I said, what do you mean, what am I giving your child? And they said, they keep coming home raving about these chocolate chip cookies. So the parents started buying the cookies from me because they couldn't duplicate the recipe. And they were paying me $10 a bag for these cookies. Wow. Uh, not what sold for today, though. <laughs> we just <laughs> want to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> yeah. they, are, they are sold less. It depends on the retail location, but you know we are a wholesale. We do sell them online, but we also sell them in wholesales and, and retail stores. Well, when we're off the camera, mm -hmm. being a sales executive and trainer, I need to talk with you. The prices are not supposed to go down. This supposed to go, <laughs> know, just right? kidding, people. Uh, <laughs> but that's good. So yeah. you're giving a healthy snack, yes. and you're giving it at uh, a reasonable cost. Yes. Wow, yes. that's great. Can't ask for much more. Now, uh, is there something else that you do? It sounds like um, you, know, you provide the, the treats. Mm -hmm. And I really do want to come back and talk with you about uh, your work with the uh, ADHD students mm -hmm. and how you're taking uh, sugar and those things that really drive that uh, behavior for the children. I want to come back and talk with you about that a little bit more. Sure. But let's talk about... Maybe some other things that you're doing now. Are you a personal trainer as well? I used to be. Mm -hmm. I used to be a personal trainer. Actually, after uh, I actually was in California running professionally, and sometimes life hands you lemons, yeah. and you either throw the lemons or you make lemonade. Well, I could no longer pursue my professional running career. So I was given the opportunity to become a personal trainer in Dallas, Texas. Wow. With this, the company went under, unfortunately, but he handed me $250 and some gym equipment. And so there are your lemons. Wow. <laughs> and I decided that I'm gonna go with this. And I took my one client and it became 65 clients within just a few months. Okay. It was a lot. It was driving 250 miles a day, and especially on Sundays, people were really in tune with what I had to say to them. And with my training, and it, it just kept people in a very simple approach, worked with their body weight, and they saw results, they passed the word on, and there you go. You are a perfect example of Plan B, preparing for that Plan B. Uh, we have what we call the ABCs, and thanks to my wife's genius, uh, she's been able to really help us to put together 
some products, if you will, some training, some classes for young people. And the A's really have to do with those words that begin in A's like um, attitude, okay. anchors, attributes, those kinds of things. But that B is a really critical piece that we're digging and diving into. And that is to prepare young athletes for the what ifs. What if we just don't make the league? What if we're not a professional runner or a professional basketball player? You've just done an incredible job of taking a situation. Um, there's a song that talks about there being a blessing in the storm. And you took that 250, That's which right. was a pretty a storm, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's not a lot of money, and the equipment, and you made something out of it. So I really applaud you for that. Thank you. I made sure my Jeep payment was paid with it. There you <laughs> go. Yes, indeed. And we'll have to talk about how we can spread this out throughout this region yes. and possibly throughout the country because, uh, once again, you could be a, a, a good spokesperson to help Coach Rick spread that word mm -hmm. about how you can plan for those things um, when you may have invested your entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, preparing for one thing mm -hmm. and surprise something yeah. else happens because I really wanted to be either a professional basketball player or I wanted to be a professional runner and sometimes that just doesn't work for you absolutely so how long have you been doing this I have been doing the cookies and research since 2008 and it researched a long time to make sure I am pairing the foods correctly you have you know you have to research the mold, you have to research shelf life. There was a lot more involved in than I expected. However, I enjoyed it because my natural self is research. Wow. And I, I really enjoy that. So because of science and math, I'm a natural researcher. Mm -hmm. So this just came naturally for me. So with that, uh, 2008, I began. And then 2012, I incorporated it and just started doing it completely. No yeah. more with the uh, personal training. So 2012, we just took off. And I still do the nutritional services because it goes together. Good. Well, you know, my wife and I talk quite a bit about the fact that we provide training, consulting, and coaching. Through a lot of hard work and preparation and a lot of mistakes that we've made, I think publicly when we get out, we make it look easy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm experiencing with you right now. You make this sound so easy. <laughs> now, there's some advice <laughs> that I'd <laughs> like to ask you to share with young people. If you could give an athlete, be they male or female, any advice about Yes, plan. Plan for that that you think that you were born to do, but also keep in mind that plan B. What, what kind of advice would you give them? Just know that to keep your calm. Know that not everything works that you set your mind to, but however, don't look at this, the situation as other people might want to call it a problem. I don't things as problems. I just look at them as situations. And just like a hurdle in front of me on the track, just like a stick or a rock on a trail, I go around it. I find a way around it or through it. And I will either I swallow my pride and I ask for help. Yes. I look into the, into the community for people like yourself, uh, for people who, uh, chefs. I mean, I have trained for four years under two chefs that have restaurants in, in Memphis, and one is Rizzo's Diner. And so I would go into them and I would say, what is a fold, or what is this, yeah. or what is that? I'm not a chef, but for four years I trained with these guys to show me how to do these things. Yeah. How do you stack a cookie? I was like, stack a cookie? What does that mean? <laughs> so I sought out people to help me. I didn't do this on my own. Yeah. And 